and we're taking 100 milliamps immediately and the voltage has dropped to point, point 0.18 dead short okay so let's turn the power off right well if that was shorted then the servo also is almost certainly going to be shorted so uh, let's just have a quick check um, I don't know if you can actually see it or not any better so I'm just going to do almost test across the servo supply now what's happening here 0 0.4 0 0.5 meg oh. seems a bit eye right turn that off well at least I could connect a, a servo a receiver to the um, servo see if the servo works or not what I have here at the moment is a transmitter uh, a different uh, RX that actually works which is connected up to the uh, servo on the motorcycle now I'm supplying the receiver with um, as you can see I don't know if you can see um, hopefully you can uh, at 4.8 volts at 200 milliamps so although the servo isn't showing short the chances are he might sh be shorted uh, once he's turned on if you see what I mean so to save the RX from overload I've limited the current to 200 milliamps so um, everything's turned, the transmitter's turned on I apply I'm applying power now the servo is moved is not responding to the transmitter and he's taken as you can see he's taken 200 milliamps so he's taken the full load I don't really want to go higher than 200 milliamps so uh, when that's not happening I'll go 250 then but it really shouldn't need more than that so if I put in uh, um, let's say I put in like uh, 250 uh, milliamps ok another 50 milliamps at 4.8 and we'll just check that 250 milliamps he's taken and this one's going full lock nothing so the servo is knackered I would say shorted out uh, open circuit um, MOSFETs so uh, so that's the so far it's the RX everything I've tested is the RX and the servo is open uh, is knackered well this is the servo that doesn't work it's just driving to one end and then just take a maximum current so I don't expect to repair this well uneconomic to repair this put it that way but I would like to know what sort of motor what sort of, what sort of torque it might have delivered there's no label on it you see there's a steering servo it's easy to replace so experimentation is no but the thing is it costs 20 pound to replace uh, again look there's no sm uh, smoke damage uh, I wonder if we can just well, rip it apart aren't we we've got the oh, this is a bearing output uh, got a ball bearing output shaft not on gears so so it's not that expensive a tiny bit of corrosion there but it looks pretty clean actually 
And the motor was actually functioning simply because it was turning. But if the MOSFETs were shorted one side, it would just drive them in one direction continuously. And if it had been met, met the end stop, then it would just take maximum current, which is what it's doing. Uh, I'm not sure of the visual differences between a digital servo and, and, uh, um, and an analog servo uh, offhand. The you know, analog ones used to have a little sort of um, a controller I see, a little H bridge I see, if I remember rightly. But it's got discrete, four discrete MOSFETs forming the H bridge, I think. So the control chip is probably the other side of this board. Either way, I can't really be bothered to fart around with it. Um, servos are cheap enough these days. I've got them coming out of my ears there, you see, exactly the same size as a Futaba. Uh, I know it didn't, I HS300 for the bog standard servo. We've got the, the Futaba 3001s, used to be the ones with the bull ray, standard servo with the bull ray. They're exactly the same size case. So, I mean, if that's not powerful enough, then you, you fit in another more powerful servo, don't you? So I wouldn't rush off and, and buy, although a digital one centers better. Will center more uh, better than a, a analog servo. So a cheap digital, digital servo is uh, it's going to cost you like 15, 18 pound anyway. Uh, it's a bit naughty that they haven't put the uh, label on, so you don't know. You don't know what's going on here. Right. What I want to test this time is uh, the the gyro motor in the back wheel. In other words, the entire back wheel assembly and the the uh, gyro control board here. Now. Uh, they are connected together they are supplied directly from the battery not through the ESC or anything it's almost certainly blown can't almost virtually guarantee it the control port probably but is the motor blown because if the motor isn't blown it, I can save myself about £40 you see but uh, who knows it ain't going to do any more damage now than to supply it so I'm going to supply the entire gyro system with uh, with a current limited supply. So if I just uh, pair these two wires, and if I connect them up to. power supply and uh, well initially I'll turn the power supply on it would be full battery voltage but this one will, will run on uh, to, to happily on two cell lipos which is basically seven, seven and a half volts isn't it? so I can put in uh, yeah. I'll put in here if you can see that. Um a seven point uh, five volts and uh let's try well, let's try one amp. Uh, one amp. Let's try that. Let's turn it on and see what happens. I can hear the motor spinning. And it's taking 0 0.95, 0 0.98, one amp. I can't believe it, something's lit here. And 
that's taken 0.8 of an amp. What if I now dial in? Oh, he's continuing increasing in RPM as if the controller board's not working. Right, let's put in, let's put in, say, 1.5 uh, amp. Um. So you still don't need, I put in a current limit of 1.5 amps, and it's building up. 1.3. Motor's increasing. So I see what's happening here. The motor's spinning, but the control board's not controlling the motor. There is up one and a half amps now. This is getting hot. Well, just to prove this, we'll go to uh, 1.7 uh, 5. Uh, uh. That's weird. He's weird. You, you switched down to 0. Uh. And he's building up again. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1 amp, 1.2 amps, 1.3, 4, the last time he stopped on 1.5 amps. <coughs> It seems to have stopped on 1.4 amps now. Okay, so we'll do power, we'll do, let's do 2 amps. We step 1.3. Well, I think if I recall, the color, the LED colors, was to do with um, what setting you added on. A different setting was different colors, was a different power, power effect of the. Of, you, see, you see the gyro actually functioning here. The reductance of the wheel to fall over. So if I let, leave that running, he doesn't want to turn actually, no. We don't want to actually, uh, for the wheel to revolve. Look at that. Look, he's got the brake on. I think he's running too fast, that's why. So I think it'd be a bit premature to rush out and buy a new um, motor system. I think it's just the controller that's playing up. I think the controller is just um, blasting away on. I think the controller is 30 and the wheel is 40. So uh, if I can save 40 on the wheel and save. Another 40 on the drive motor, 
That's 80 pounds south. So, uh, and the motor wasn't taken on seven and a half volts, so um, I can always check it on 12, but if it's going through it full blast, I mean, if he was going to short out, he short out on, on, um, on seven and a half volts, wouldn't he? 